Let's talk in reverse to the review of a very remarkable Champions League week. You saw it in the headline, the Kings are dead, long live the Kings. I think this is to me the overarching story. This is the first time where I really, really have the feeling that the old guard, Messi and Ronaldo, is about to step down. They're not quite gone yet, but they're about to step down. And the new guard, i.e. Um, Mbappé and Haaland, are about to take over. Um, and you saw it also in interviews of Haaland after the game yesterday that yeah after Mbappé did something great at Barcelona he needed to step it up as well so uh, you kind of get a similar feel it's not Argentina against uh, Portugal it is now France against Norway seemingly so that was one big story that I took away the other one is and I'm waiting a little bit for confirmation next week because I think it's not done but speed kills and the Spanish are way too slow uh, that's another thing that a Sevilla team that is very good in La Liga is completely inept against the Dortmund team that is not so good in Bundesliga however and I'm saying it's now up front before we talk a little bit more about the games Dortmund has had one great game this year and that was a way to Leipzig and I was thinking yeah Sevilla while not playing like Leipzig per se uh, is also uh, an opponent that likes the ball and Dortmund can use their speed to hit them on the counter attack which most of the other teams in the Bundesliga do not offer to Dortmund so uh, there is an obvious connection right there well that's for the headlines for now uh, briefly going through the games I actually want to start in the new camp because I think this was the most momentous um, result of them all with PSG going to Barcelona and comfortably winning 4-1, deservedly winning 4-1. Um, I don't know when I saw the early exchanges, I mean I both nights I watched on a channel where they flip uh, back and forth between the two games which I personally like better because I can see I basically don't miss any of the action. Whenever they swept over, I mean the commentator said the game is rather even but I always felt that whatever PSG was doing seemed to be a real team effort and yes PSG was not I didn't mention it on this channel uh, because you know French Cup is not what I am really interested in at the moment Neymar was not playing but uh, PSG put in a real team effort you could see that the midfield is taking over Barcelona's midfield and the Barcelona was very quickly caught out on the back foot in many ways and yeah you got PK back who was a little bit out of sorts against Mbappé uh, to begin with coming out of, uh, of a very lengthy injury but you also saw how vocal he got and I mean there it's great that you don't have spec expected he got really really vocal and, ca and calling everyone out please I mean uh, we're hanging on barely here they, they took the lead through a penalty which uh, when I saw it initially I really didn't see the, uh, that it was a penalty but then in the morning you know may, maybe I was that I, I could see that he was clipped uh, in my book it is not really a penalty because Kuzawa I think is just crossing and uh, accidentally hitting the foot that then goes into the um, uh, other foot of uh, De Jong. Uh, anyway Messi still out, makes it 1-0 and you think oh, Barcelona have, have, have having a little bit of luck but no, no, no luck because immediately Mbappé with a great uh, brilliant effort, individual effort, uh, gets uh, a PSG level could have been 2-1 at the half, it should have probably a few, um, should have been some goals actually after half. I mean after half it seemed to me that Barcelona capitulated, uh, they could not handle the PSG midfield and the goals were just uh, a consequence of what's coming. Mbappé adds another one where uh, basically it was a really nice pass out to Florenzi who uh, in, who uh, craw crossed it in where Piquet tries to save it but it lands uh, directly at Mbappé's feet puts it into the net, then uh, a goal is scored by Moise Ken and then Mbappé adds his fourth. At the moment where Griezmann almost would have made it 2-3 two, two, thanks to a, uh, a horrible Navas mistake. But yeah, uh, did not happen. I actually thought it might be more in, in, in it if it's 2-3 but it ended 4-1. It was fully deserved. For me the big question is now how is gonna PSG mess this one up? because that's what we always see from PSG but uh, it was a rather convincing performance PSG can keep them up you would think they might be favorites I actually have to, have to say careful 
Yes, it was a very good group of performance, but this is not a very good Barcelona team. So uh, from that point, point of view, this might be we might still have to wait for it. In the other game, uh, Leip Leipzig against Liverpool in Budapest, where although they tried to make it as homey as possible for Leipzig, um, no, not not really. Although there were all the, the fan flags and so on in the background, the banners. Um, it was a game where Leipzig started out flying uh, with, I think, Olmo hitting the post after a um, corner very early on. Uh, but Liverpool took over the game and had large control, like they already did against Leicester. Um, and that's what I always had the feeling that while Leipzig could be dangerous on a break over or whatever, or, you know, uh, they had some danger, they were too thin up front and Liverpool had them quite well. Uh, in check and then Leipzig uh, killed themselves with Savica playing a horrible pass uh, right into the feet of Mo Salah, you, you can see he plays the pass and he already goes, oh no, well, what they do, I think he was applying for, to play for Liverpool, to be honest. Uh, Salah make, makes one in short, shortly after uh, Upamecano falls over and in, in, in the end Mane makes it 2-0. Uh, I think before that there was a great save on Kunku by Alisson, who got back also, uh, that probably could have changed the game and then make, make it to nil. Liverpool also comfortable and we'll see it later late on. Both PSG and Liverpool with big away wins that give them, a, I think, an MML a 96% chance of advancing. So, um, pretty remarkable. Yesterday was a day of early goals. Uh, again, let's start first at the start. It was not. Did anyone see Ronaldo yesterday? Except at the very end when he was bitterly complaining about a penalty that I think never should, should have been given. It was clear this was not, not given. You were not turning up and uh, twice conceding within the first minute of each half, or almost the first, first minute. I mean, uh, they try to play it out of, uh, from the back at, at the beginning, and Bentancur plays a horrible pass back, uh, and Taremi just needs to uh, splash, you know, take it from Ches uh, Chesney, and that baby basically set the game already on the wrong road. You were had really really long time to get something going and Chiellini had to come off as as well then you think in the second half maybe 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 no immediately off the um, um, Musa Marega guy who I actually like <laughs> I don't see very very well for, but I'm quite impressed by him although he 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 likes to waste his chances makes it 2-0 and it is uh, a fire on the Andrea Doria one is it Juve it was almost a no-show. This was almost, it was, it was embarrassing. This is not Juventus in many ways. They they get the goal through Chiesa late on. It was probably the saving grace and maybe they can pull out the tie because this was an um, away game that was sorely needed. And as we will see, Juve is now still the slight favorites over Porto, but that was not a great Juve performance. And then Sevilla against Dortmund is a similar, very similar story to Barcelona PSG, except that the scoreline was a lot friendlier. But one player dominated there, and this was uh, Erling Haaland, who I don't know, I have not seen him in the Bundesliga like this as, as of late. But this time around, uh, absolutely amazing the way he went about it. Uh, yes, they gave up an early, early goal through a deflection by Hummels, but I think at that point, Sevilla should have actually pounced and put him on, on, under pressure, but this Sevilla kind of played slow. And then um, Haaland is already in, in instrumentally first goal through Mahout, uh, who can pull it out from from it from a distance because the whole hold up play by Haaland worked that, that, that way. Then they kind of try to keep off uh, Haaland, who has no trouble. Uh, it's typically Haaland goal in many ways uh, to make it 2-1. He adds a third uh, as well. And it is really, you think it's cruising at the halftime, they, they were already talking in the German TV studio. Yeah, it's a door, 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 already through and Didi Hammer said, no, let's wait. Yeah, Sevilla came back. I mean, Sevilla should have given, uh, there should have been a penalty given against Sevilla because, I mean, the way Papu Gomez gets the ball here towards the hand did not look very good. Uh, but Sevilla then also had a claim for a penalty late. I think probably was alright. Both penalties not given. Sevilla get a goal back very late on uh, because I think Dortmund was hanging back uh, a lot. But I think after all four games, we have at least three teams that are very clearly uh, favored now to move on. And I'm not sure what Juventus will do against Porto. If they have another such performance, then I think Porto does not have to fear anything in Italy. 
If you're looking here at the chances, I mean all the teams that had such clear wins with Liverpool, PSG and Dortmund now of course moving up ahead of uh, let's say Bayern or Real Madrid and Chelsea because they have not played yet, they still have, 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 have to play the tie. So those teams have a definite advantage. You were also not falling too deep, only in the 8th spot because uh, you know they're still in there although their chances dwindled. Note Barcelona and Leipzig are down and out in the model and yeah it will be interesting to see how it will be after next week's games. So those are my thoughts from the Champions League uh, this, this week. It was a very interesting, I think one can say momentous round. I really think we saw the change from the old superstars to the new guard of superstars they really showed the old guys uh where it's at and the second thing is that i think spain needs a big rethink i'm a little bit holding back because i want to see what's being played next week with real madrid and atletico madrid still playing however given their opponents i don't s s i think the reign of spain is nearing its end and the Spanish soccer needs to reinvent itself. But hey, that's all to be seen. Let me know what you thought about all the all, all, all those games and all these topics that I now broached here. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!